Now, as recommended by one of our viewers, I've decided to participate in the seamstress tag. I don't often sit down when I do my videos, but I can see we're going to have to get a little bit cosy. So let's have a look at what the first question is. Who are you? Who am I? I don't know. Who am I? I'm Tree, which is simply short for trees are. Um, I'm a mum, as well as owning this sewing and DIY style channel called Stitchless TV. When and why did I start sewing? Oh my goodness, that's such a big question. Um, I've been sewing probably since I was about eight, nine, ten years old. And I guess I started uh, because of my mum. <laughs> my mum was very creative. Um, she came over to England when she was in her 20s. She couldn't speak any English at all. And um, the way that she earned money was by doing piecework, which is when you sew from home and you just churn out hundreds and hundreds of sleeves or loads and loads of bags. This is actually one of the original Coty, which is a makeup brand, Coty makeup bags that my mum used to make in the early 60s. Look, I've even still got the spare handles and this little purse, this kind of powder puff purse and some of the original bias binding. So, so this woman that my mum used to work for, she was called Priscilla Lobley, and they produced these flower kits to make um, poppies, these big poppies. So this is in the 70s, so they have a kind of 70s look. And these amazing, look at these sunflowers, and these amazing sunflowers. Right, next question. <clears throat> what is your favourite or proudest make? Oh. <laughs> okay, I think I'm going to have to go and rummage around in my wardrobe for that one. Back in a minute. I think it probably, I don't know, there are quite a few things, but one that you might like, I think it's probably this one, this cape, because... I don't know. Why is my, my proudest make? I don't know, it's finished off very nicely. Um, and I quite enjoy doing the, the contrast fabrics. Uh, and when I wear it, I do feel really special. I feel like someone out of a film or something, like an Anna Karina film. Now I know it's black, it's probably the worst thing to choose, isn't it? Because it doesn't come up very well on camera. But, um, so it's fully lined. See how it's fully lined? It's actually quite easy to do, but anyway, it's fully lined. I've done this sort of contrast broidery anglaise fabric, which I've repeated around the, um, where the arm comes out on the cape. And I've done it as a yoke up there. What else can I show you? Oh yeah, it's got kind of elbow patches on the back. And, shall I turn it around? And this funny, has this funny vent thing at the back. And do you know what? Do you know why I did that? I ran out of fabric, didn't I? <laughs> so I had to put like a patch of stuff at the back. But sometimes in sewing, your mistakes lead on to your most creative moments. Now, if you love my cape too, I have actually got a two part. Um, tutorial on how to make a version of the same cape. Look, we've got the contrast bits at the back and the, the gathered skirty bit with a, a vent. We do some nice, um, oh, what's that pin doing there? Don't usually use pins. Um, we finish off with some bias binding. So we've had my proudest make. Oh, my most disastrous make. I don't know about... <laughs> most disastrous, I don't have disasters darling, um, 
is actually a video tutorial and it's a really good video tutorial because it's how to make high-waisted leggings by cloning, copying um, an existing pair of leggings. But do you know what? I made it in the most awful material. Look at this. Look, you have to... Oh, good God. Would you want to wear that? It's just such awful material. Look. Oh, can you see that? I really am peeling it. I have worn them though, but look what happened when I worn, oh look, that's, that's just awful. Good God, but don't let it put you off. It's just that the fabric is so awful. Next, where is your favourite place to go shopping? Well, there's only one place. Well, there isn't. There are lots of places, but I have to mention Gold Hawk Road. I've been going there since I was a little kid with my mum. Um, I supported them during their campaign to save the market and save all our favourite fabric shops, including classic textiles from demolition. We went to the High Court Justice, there was a public inquiry and do you know what? They won their fight. Anyway, from Classic Textiles on the Gold Hawk Road in Shepherd's Bush, do you want to see some really, really amazing fabric? Now, there are actually a couple of reasons uh, why I bought it, apart from wanting to create a kind of edgy Chanel jacket with a bit of a twist. I also wanted to examine the way that it was constructed. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, no, really, because the way that they've done it, it's really easy. They've got a lace that had some embroidery on, and I can see embroidery and beading, and I can see that because there's no stitching on this side. So it already had all the detail on the lace. And do you know what they've gone and done? They've simply bonded it to this sort of Chanel silky wool fabric. Now, because I love the shops in the Gold Hawk Road so much, I've created my own little map of my favorite fabric shops and why I like them and what they sell there. Um, and if you want a copy of this map, you can email me at stitchless at hotmail.co.uk. I guess I'll put it somewhere below. Now, more recently, I have discovered the world of online fabric shopping, and it's pretty dangerous. And one place, well, two places that I like, one of them's quite far away though. Um, mood fabrics, of course, they are just amazing. Mood fabrics, you are amazing. But slightly closer to home, I think in Brighton, I've got to tell you, about the Fabric Godmother. Now I've been looking and looking at this company for quite a long time because they do seem to have great fashion fabrics and I didn't do anything until I saw the owner hugging a dressmaker's dummy with this fantastic puffer fabric and I love puffer fabric. Now the reason why I want to mention them is I was blown away by the amazing service I ordered it at about three o'clock on, I can't remember, a Wednesday, and good God, it came before 12 o'clock the next day. So that definitely deserves a mention. Okay, we're now on to my most used, my most used pattern. Now I should probably do myself a favor and mention some of the pattern brands, but you know what, to be honest, there is a pattern, it's a raglan sleeve pattern, and I sell it in my Etsy shop, but do you know what, you can use any raglan sleeve pattern, you don't have to buy mine. And the reason, and the way that I use it is like a pattern block, okay? Now I'm not into wearing fitted clothes, which is why I kind of like that raglan sleeve shape, because it can go off as a A-line thing, or you can do all sorts of things. So I'm gonna show you some examples of how I use my PDF download raglan sleeve pattern, but use any one. So one of, them that, one of the things is for this cape. So 
So for that, the starting position was the raglan sleeve pattern, and then I just absorbed the raglan sleeve into the shape of it. Okay, I've got a tutorial on how to make a summer coat, I think it's called, out of the tablecloth, yeah, nothing wrong with that. And for that, I use my raglan sleeve pattern, except I have since shortened it, because if you sew, you know that your clothes kind of evolve, don't they? And I've put a drawstring in the back. Well, the yoke was made with um, an embroidered napkin. Okay, my vintage scarf top. How to make a top out of two vintage tourism scarves. And you are so lucky if you find two matching vintage tourism scarves. That's my raglan sleeve pattern too. Now they say that um, you should only really sort of do things in threes. So I didn't know whether to show my bomber jacket or this kind of 40s looking um, fur jacket. So forget that, we'll do the bomber jacket. So this bomber jacket using a vintage 80s Liberty print cotton lawn. This was also made from my raglan sleeve pattern block. And it's a four part, I think it's a four part tutorial because we have to show you how to do the ribbing on the neck, uh, the little zip welt pockets, how to put the open ended zip in the front and then how to do the um, elastic. Actually, everything on my channel is free and I think that PDF raglan sleeve pattern is the only thing that I sell. That's weird. Okay, so, number seven, your most dreaded sewing task. Hmm. <laughs> well, it used to be to do these bound uh, buttonholes, but since then I had the lovely Colleen G. Lee come and show me how to do it in a tutorial. So my most favourite sewing task? Hmm. <laughs> uh, I think it would count. My most favourite sewing task is what I call draping and sketching on the dummy to make um, unusual sewing patterns. I participated in this thing called the genius hashtag genius challenge and do you want to see do you want to see that do you want to see what I did you're going to be really sick of me saying this I'm sorry <laughs> I'm choking <coughs> no I'm sorry but I've got a video explaining um, how I how I made this jacket out of two pairs of jeans. Sewing entertainment. Okay, sewing entertainment. Well, for me, that's easy, but you might think it's a bit weird. <laughs> so, my sewing entertainment is anything to do with TR cutting or origami pattern cutting. It usually involves going on one of his online courses or if you're lucky enough to meet him in person and go on one of his uh, weekend courses, which I'm actually going to be doing tomorrow. Yes, get in there. Sorry, <sighs> can't believe it. I also really love looking at his slightly expensive um, TR cutting book. It does actually come with DVDs as well. So you do get DVDs with it. And these are some of the things that I've made that I just loved, loved doing on one of his online courses. So you get to do things like these heart bodices or integrated colour blocking seams 
or these rather strange three-dimensional sculptural avant-garde box bodice blocks. Now I've actually got three, four tutorials of doing stuff with the guy that's responsible for this TR cutting technique. His name is Shingo Sato. Printed or PDF? Hmm. Uh, when I use patterns, because, you know, I do a lot of cloning of existing clothing and, and modifying them uh, and recreating a sort of calico pattern. But when I use patterns, I really can see the benefit of um, using the PDF downloads, even though they are so annoying to stick together. Now the reason why I prefer them is not only because you can get them instantly, but more for this reason. If you get a PDF download, you can download it as many times as you want and you can modify it. So like my raglan sleeve pattern, you'll see in my tutorials, I'm constantly making the sleeve shorter, changing the neckline, slashing it up and creating a bit of flouncing on the sleeves or on just the back. So I don't want to have to use that pattern again next time I use it. I want to print off another one and then make changes to that one. Does that make sense? But having said that, I do of course use patterns occasionally. And if any of you pattern companies out there would like me to do a tutorial on one of your patterns, if it's something that fits in with the kind of stitchless look, I'll be happy to, to have a look. Right, what sewing machine do I use? Mm, well, slightly spoilt for choice. I've got mm, 10 sewing machines, maybe including a Benina and a load of those John Lewis mini JLs and a vintage 60s hand cranky one for sewing outside in the park. Um, but do you know what? Oh, this is really, really true. My all time favorite is this one, which is the Genome Decor XL2, as in Roman numerals two, 5024. I'll probably put it in text somewhere, but I'm really, really telling you the truth, okay? I bought this sewing machine 12 uh, ish years ago. It was just after I'd had my first child, and we used to live in Aberdeen, and I, I had to go to a ball, and so I said to my, my partner, Okay, I can either buy a kind of ball ground for what, three, four, five hundred quid, as you do, I don't, um, or I could buy a sewing machine for around 200 quid. Now I think it's now about 250 because of inflation. Um, so obviously he went for the 200 pound option and I made my own ball gown. You probably want to see a picture, don't you? Oh yeah, or maybe I'll show you a picture in a minute. Anyway, so I bought it 12 years ago. I've had it serviced twice, just because you should, but one time something did go wrong a little bit. But 12 years, that's not bad. But, shall I tell you why it must be good? They haven't changed it, Genome haven't changed it at all, and I still see it today in John Lewis stores. Right, only just, I can only just fit into this. Good God, oh. Whew. Anyway, can you see the sleeves? I thought you might quite like the big kind of balloony sleeves. It's got this peplum thing in organza. Now, I couldn't reach to do up the, um, the little hook thing at the back, but that, that would normally come across there at the back. So this is what I made, which is much better than spending loads of money on a ready-made ball gown outfit. 
Right, where are we? We are... Ah, number 12. Right. Finally, do you have any other hobbies? Yes, I've got loads of hobbies. Um, but one that is sort of a bit relevant is playing around with digital fabric printing. I love it. I love the opportunity that it gives you to create a really unique bit of fabric. For example, I make this design. Is that the right way up? I made that. Can you see that? I made that design and got it printed onto some velvet at this company called Contrado. And as you can see, I've made it into a giant floor cushion. But using a kind of collage of lots and lots of different images and sort of a little bit of painting up and stuff like that, I created that print. Okay, <laughs> so that's that. But, I'm going to show you a little bit of magic. Now, again, I have a tutorial for this as well. It's all about sublimation heat transfer printing, which I do quite a lot. And I found I can do it in my own home with an iron, which means you can too. And when you do it, you can do things like this. You can get a regular garment. Like that, yeah, that's a regular plain garment, isn't it? Look at this. You can turn it into this. But I've got two films, yeah, I've got two films where I explain to you how to do it, but it is brilliant. So I just want to say a really big thank you to Holly Sows, who's the person that was responsible for coming up with this hashtag for for YouTube. So thank you Holly. So I do think you should go and look at Holly So's um, channel as well and give her a big kind of subscribe thumbs up. Now speaking of subscribing, should you decide to subscribe to Stitchless TV, can I just say there's like this little flower thing next to where you press the subscribe button and do you know what, if you press that then that means you get notified about my new video um, sewing tutorials and sewing reports. So it is worth doing, because otherwise, why would you subscribe? So I thought I'd get the flowers out for our out shot. <laughs> I hope it wasn't too boring. Thank you very much for watching. And to all you other hashtag seamstress uh, YouTubers out there, I'm always up for a bit of collaborating. So if you're interested in collaborating, then email me or comment or message. Oh, and if you want that map of Gold Hawk Road that I created with the, my favorite fabric shops, don't forget to email me and I'll just send it along to you for free. It doesn't cost anything. Thank you so much for watching and see you again very soon, hopefully. See you again soon. Bye.